it's a pleasure to be here today to, to share the results of our trust barometer with you. Um, Edelman, just to give you a bit of background, we are the world's largest independent communications agency with offices all over the world. Um, and of course, communication is so important in the midst of this pandemic. Um, and as uh, Dr. Babash very kindly gave a sort of intro for me, so is trust. So um, hopefully you will find this data of um, interest. I'll go through it fairly quickly because I know we do have time for Q&A at the end. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. Um, just to say in terms of methodology, we have surveyed just over 33,000 people this year in 28 different countries. Um, and just a word on our segmentation, you can see on the right hand side, when we uh, poll our online population, we split them into two segments, one of which is the mass population, which is pretty much everyone, as you would imagine. But within that, we pull out the informed public. Now, the informed public is a sector which has um, to meet four criteria, 25 to 64 in age, college educated, in the top quartile of the income for their country, and they also have to report a significant engagement in public policy and business news. And when I'm talking to an audience like yourself, where we're talking about health, what I always think is that this is probably the audience where many of our stakeholders actually sit. For example, regulators, policy makers, healthcare professionals, whereas probably our patients are all in the mass population. Um, so just to give you a bit of background. Um, on the next slide, thank you. Um, we've been doing this for uh, 20, 25 years now, this uh, 21 years, sorry, this, uh, this survey. Um, and we've gone from seeing, um, you know, the rise of social media, the rise of peer pressure, the rise of influence online, to seeing many of those trends bottom out. And I'll go through some of those today because it's particularly interesting in terms of some of the things that Dr. Babash was saying. So on the next slide, um, you can see here that we're reporting a burst in the Trump's bubble. Uh, last year in May, we uh, did a uh, cut of this data and we saw that trust had surged in all four of the institutions that we investigate. So we look at government, media, NGOs and business. And in May of last year, as the sort of pandemic was peaking, we saw trust in all of those groups surge, particularly the best, best, biggest beneficiary of that was government. And as you can see here, trust in government had gone up hugely last year. However, now we see that that bubble has burst. And you can see here that, you know, swings, roundabouts. The biggest loss we see now is in government trust. And government has lost eight points from that high peak. Now, of course, this varies market to market. And on the right-hand side, you can see a few of the uh, bigger sort of losses and falls um, over here from sort of South Korea, you can see is one of the biggest losses from the May to the January uh, survey, China as well. Um, so you can see that probably you can assume that that is a response to how governments have handled the pandemic. But the result of all this, and if we go to the next slide, is that business has become the only trusted institution. So out of all four of them, business is now the only one that has a score higher than 60%, which puts them into the trust category. Um, so what does that mean for us? Well, what does that mean for um, communications and what does that mean for vaccines? Well, we'll get a little bit deeper into the healthcare sector, but what it also means is that um, trust is becoming very local. And if you look at the next slide, you can see here, we often say that you know, there is a saying that familiarity breeds contempt. And we say, actually, no, familiarity breeds trust. People tend to trust those things that are familiar to them. And here you can see that trust in my employer, my employer, the company that employs me, is now incredibly high. You can see 76% here on a global basis. So whilst trust in business globally is high, it's even higher when you ask people about their own employer. And again, you can see here some of the, the, the variations. But just to give you a bit of a reference, you know, this, is, this has been rising over time. So over the last four or five years, we've seen trust in my employer rise, and that's a trend we see continuing. Now, what we'll do next, on the, let's click through the next couple of slides, because now we'll look specifically at the healthcare sector. And if you go to the next slide, 
what we do when we ask the trust barometer questions is we go across a whole range of different sort of industries or sectors and you can see those listed here and so we ask people how much do you trust companies and organizations in healthcare to do the right thing now last year in may that previous study i was sort of talking to you about healthcare and food and beverage had become the most trusted sectors and of course that's understandable because they are the two sectors that perhaps were in the front line of battling the pandemic healthcare in terms of you know medical care and food and beverage keeping people fed and watered under the strictures of the pandemic now you see that that decline has affected both of those sectors and what we're seeing is a kind of normalization here so technology historically in our study is always the most trusted sector but healthcare has generally been sort of towards the middle of the pack. So healthcare here is still towards the top end. So we are still seeing a sort of upswing in terms of health trust in the healthcare sector generally. But on the next slide, it's obviously gone down quite considerably. So we've lost that, we've lost that sort of excitement that we had around healthcare back in May. We've lost a bit of that trust. It's still above what it was, but it's a little bit lower. And again, you can see on the right hand side, there's quite a lot of variation across our markets. So, for example, China, we see quite a big drop there. Uh, we talked to our local teams there and they said, well, yes, you know, people, whilst they are sort of life is going back to normal, there is still a little bit of concern about the government perhaps didn't manage that as well as the, the, the pandemic as well as they might have done. Similarly, you see that in South Korea. Um, but most most of the most of the sort of countries have have lost some trust in their healthcare sector. And on the next slide, we just pulled out some of those highs and lows for you. Um, again, the dark blue bars mean trust, the grey bars mean neutral, and the red bars mean untrusted. So here, when you see those lows and highs in healthcare, Australia quite a you know big rise there. But again, you saw a good response to the COVID-19 pandemic in Australia. You know, the, the country's managed it pretty well. So the healthcare sector's come out of that quite well. Uh, again, China on the low side, South Korea on the low side, and Japan on the low side. And, you know, that's, for example, Japan maybe sort of, did, although they've had fewer cases, it's put the healthcare sector under immense strain. So people perhaps beginning to see that their healthcare, their healthcare services are not as fit for purpose as perhaps they thought. Now, on the next slide, we also divide healthcare into various subsectors, which you can see here. So we ask people about hospitals, biotech and life sciences companies, consumer health, health insurance, and pharmaceutical companies. And you can see these have all gone down a little bit, but the one that's gone down the least is the pharmaceutical industries. And if we go onto the next slide, We'll look at this one in a bit more detail, market by market. So you can see here that although trust has decreased in 15 of 27 countries in pharmaceutical companies, it's still somewhat higher than it was. It's gone down globally by one percentage point. And one would sort of posit, I suggest, that that is probably because people think the pharma industry has responded on the whole pretty well. You know, they've come up with vaccines in record time. Um, again, you see those national variations, perhaps reflecting the overall healthcare trust levels on the pharma companies. You know, Australia quite high here, um, the US high, Japan a bit low. Again, maybe because that uh, reflects how they feel overall about their immunization programs. Um, the next slide, we do the same thing. We look at the biotech and life sciences um, sector and ask people about trust in that. And again, you can see that that's gone down in 20 of the 27 countries. And I have to say though, when we have in previous years asked people if they understand the difference between pharmaceutical and biotech and life sciences co companies, they're not always terribly clear on that. So um, there is a tendency we think for people to think of biotech as being where the sort of the, the new medical approaches are invented and pharmaceutical companies being the people who then manufacture those and sell those, but we don't actually have any data to support that. That's just what we feel over time. I mentioned trust and familiarity. And on the next slide, you can see the hospital sector highlighted. Again, this has gone down, but still very high. Hospitals are generally the highest trusted of our healthcare 
subsectors, which you would expect because, you know, as Dr. Babash has mentioned earlier, people tend to trust their physician. They trust the people they see at the clinics they go to, the hospitals they go to, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, and then on the next slide, uh, we, have the, um, we have the health insurance. Um, health insurance is generally one of the lower of the subsectors that we look at. And again, you see that slight decrease. I don't know, Katie must be feeling pretty smug during this conversation because Australia is, is sort of done pretty well again, a high of up, up 12 points, whereas again, we see Japan low. And again, that's probably reflecting the fact that, you know, the health insurance industry is suffering from seeing the sort of cracks in healthcare generally that were perceived in that nation. Um, but, you know, China as well, and, you know, again, another low there. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation that we segment the audience into that informed public and the mass population. And on this next slide, you can see how we have mapped that in terms of this is healthcare trust uh, over the last few years. And what you can see here is that this, this widening gap, this inequality in trust, um, we saw it highest in the in two years previously, it narrowed during the midst of the pandemic, but now it's widening out again. So you see that, that, that the sort of informed public, much more trusting of healthcare than the mass population. And of course, this is reflected in some of the things that you all know around where, is, where are those pools and reservoirs of vaccine hesitancy in the population? They tend to be in the mass population rather than the informed public. But again, something to keep in mind. Um, on the next slide, um, we've uh, asked people about uh, the sort of the, the sort of what what are the sort of escalating societal issues, and um, this is interesting and but perhaps not surprising to see that improving healthcare is now top of people's societal priorities. Now, previously that has tended to be things like climate change, poverty, education, but of course with the pandemic, people are now much more interested in seeing that the healthcare system improve over and above those other, um, those other uh, issues. And that's despite some of the um, you know, high profile campaigns around things like diversity and inclusion. So interesting that people are still prioritizing healthcare. Um, on the next slide, we move into talking about uh, the sort of who are the, who are the trusted voices. And again, Dr. Babash talked a little bit about this. And um, what we see here is that trust in societal leaders is declining um, amidst all of these urgent uh, problems and issues that we've seen over the last year. People see that leadership is failing. So none of those societal <laughs> leaders groups, not government officials, religious leaders, not business leaders, not even religious leaders are trusted to do what is right. The people who are most likely to do the right thing, the people who are most trusted on that right hand side. People in my local community, and again, that sort of people like me thing has been a, 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 a piece of the trust puzzle for quite a long time now. People trust their peers, the people who are you know, part of their community. Um, but also scientists, although that's fallen, and that's fallen from a huge peak in May of eight, uh, 80%, still very, very high for scientists. So. Even if there's been that decrease, don't, don't take that as meaning scientists are distrusted. That's not the case. And when you look at them in comparison to those other societal leaders on that slide, the scientific voice is still considered very important. And one of the reasons that's important is on the next slide, um, you can see that we, um, we have a, a, a slight uh, degree of social paranoia going on around our, our respondents here. So there is a concern that societal leaders, supported by the media, are um, spreading lies and misinformation. So you see here, 57% think government leaders are trying to mislead them, 56% think business leaders are trying to mislead them, and 59% think journalists and reporters. And this last figure um, really is the trend that we've seen over quite a few years now, this sort of declining trust in, in the media. And I'll go into a bit more detail on that in a moment. Um, on the next slide, following on from that, you see that people starting to worry about scientists being motivated by other agendas. 54% think scientists design their research to ensure that, that that study will support their employers 
that the government inserts pressure on scientists to express support for its policies. Um, I would imagine that might be particularly higher here in the UK. And people believe that scientists might design their research. So this sort of this kind of buys into the, the, the sort of rise of conspiracy theories, which I think we've seen over the last year of the pandemic. But it's interesting to see that scientists, although still hugely trusted, are not quite beyond the sort of the, the concerns of the population when it comes to uh, you know, political agendas, particularly. And again, Dr. Babash mentioned some of that around the sort of this becoming a political issue. You can see that that's starting to taint science. Um, talking of uh, scientific leaders, not, next slide. Um, you see here what we've put down is the, the public health experts. And you see that um, globally, people do trust their public health experts, but that's decreased again since May. And the other one, the interesting point here is on the far right hand side, 46% say it's been difficult for them to find reliable and trustworthy information about the virus. And that's, you know, that's something that's le led us to talk about on the next slide, the fact that as well as a pandemic, we are suffering from a raging infodemic. And of course, that really threatens the public health response, because as we've as we're all here to talk about today, it's that that is partly responsible for vaccine hesitancy. Now on the next slide, I said earlier, I talk a bit more about the information sources. You can see here that trust in all information sources is at a record low over the last sort of 10 years since we've been doing this particular part of the study. None of the sources of news is trusted and they've all declined significantly since last year. That's search endings, traditional media, owned media and social media. So nobody trusts anybody. None of those information sources that historically, I mean, we've seen them, usually we see some rise, some fall, but all of them dramatic falls, as you can see. And where does that leave us in terms of looking for reliable information? Well, I mentioned earlier, trust in my employer being high. And on the next slide, you see this pull through as an information source as well. So the most believable source today is the source is my employer. So people want to hear from their employers. And for us, this is it really important because it means that, that those sort of owned media channels, those channels from sort of business organizations, et cetera, have probably much more credibility than perhaps we have historically thought. You know, I'm certainly, I'm one of the people who sort of over the last few years has tended to you know, look for independent, suggested that people look for independent information. But here you see loud and clear, my employer is the most believable information source. Um, of course, one of the problems with this whole information pandemic, and on the next slide, we'll talk about this a little bit, is people's, what we're calling information hygiene. So good information hygiene means you're engaged in news, you avoid those sort of echo chambers of information that just tell you what you believe, <clears throat> you verify information when you see it, <clears throat> and you don't amplify unverified information. But here we see that very few people have good information hygiene, only one in four. So we saw that 57% of our respondents will forward news items that they find to be interesting, but only 29% of those have good information hygiene. So it is potentially possible that they are forwarding inaccurate information just because it's in, of interest to them. And on the next slide, you see that this obviously is something that could threaten our, um, our recovery from the pandemic. People who practice good information hygiene are 11 points more likely to say that they're willing to vaccinate within the next year than those with poor information hygiene, among whom only 59% say they will vaccinate in the next year. Um, and at a country level, 16 countries have double digit gaps of willingness to vaccinate between those with good and poor information hygiene. So you can see how important the information piece is here in you know, overcoming that hesitancy. I mean, we know that's the case, but here you see that written out in black and white and that poor information hygiene is one of the big issues that we have to overcome. It's not just about what we're putting out there, it's what people are receiving and how they're treating it, whether they're verifying it, whether they're sharing it. And um, on the next slide, Dr. Babash actually sort of 
alluded to this when he spoke about the importance of transparency. The public is looking for straightforward information about the vaccines so that they can trust them. Here you see nearly two thirds say, I need to understand the science and development process used to create the COVID-19 vaccine before I fully trust it's safe. So that transparency piece, so, so important. And that's particularly important on the next slide when it comes to healthcare workers. I think we've all seen coverage in the media. We've all talked about the, the sort of surprising perhaps finding of how much vaccine hesitancy there is among healthcare workers. And here that comes through loud and clear. So in November of 2020, which is when we, we collected this data, only 33% of those employed in the healthcare sector say they're ready to be vaccinated as soon as possible. And a total of 62% said they were ready to be vaccinated within the year. And that's, you see that compared to some of those other industries. So you might argue, you might think that the healthcare workers will perhaps be the more informed, you know, the more aware. But as you can see here, that does not stack up across workers in other industries. Right, well, I think that's, thank you. I think that's the, I think I'm just about within time. Um, I know I went through that really fast, but I, I can take questions and we can also talk about it more in the, in the panel discussion. So thank you very much.